So 2012 through 2018 Ford Focus. This one's a 2014. They all have the same automatic transmission, which is a dry dual clutch. I think that's what it's called. And a lot of people hate on these because they're like, oh, the, you know, the transmissions have problems, blah, blah, blah. It's actually not the transmission that has a problem. It's the shift forks, the TCM, the transmission control module. Uh, sometimes the actuator, there's an actuator A, actuator B. We'll get into that in a minute. I'm going to take this uh, air box out and I'll show you that uh, actuator A and actuator B is actually underneath. So A controls, actuator A controls uh, the forward gears and B controls reverse. In this case, this is a 2014 Ford Focus automatic uh, 2.0 non-turbo. Uh, in this case, this car here actually doesn't engage into reverse. So. That being said, there's a code. We have uh, P073E, cannot engage reverse. So this code could be a few things, but most likely it's uh, the forks. The shift forks are stuck and they just don't move the clutch. And um, I was able to put it in reverse once or twice when I got it off the trailer. So it gets stuck, but not always. And then it triggers this code. So I'm gonna show you how to get this thing going within five minutes. Um, stay tuned and check this out. So actuator B for reverse is actually underneath the car here. It's this guy right here. This is your actuator B. It's the motor that uh, moves the forks to engage the clutch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the four bolts very easy to get to. We're gonna remove the four bolts, take it out, and uh, take a look at it. All you need is, uh, this is a full kit for a clutch install on this transmission, uh, Ford Focus or Fiesta actually. And uh, all we need is this little guy here. It's a uh, six millimeter. Uh, let's see, I'm sure you get this tool separate, but I recommend just buying this whole kit. I got it off Amazon for couple hundred dollars and uh just in case you do have to remove the transmission and the clutch you have it to reset it so you need this thing and um some brake cleaner some wd-40 and uh that's about it so let's get to it So now that the actuator is out, I'm gonna hang it up here out of the way for now. Um, if it was a bad actuator, I would trigger another code um, that the actuator is not working. But the actuator motor is trying to engage um, the clutch, but it, I guess it's just the forks are stuck. So I got the tool on this uh, little tiny impact driver and uh, we're about to see if it in fact gets stuck. It seems to be moving okay, except when you engage it all the way. It's sort of, uh, there's a delay. So, it seems to be moving okay. Um, so now what you do is, you take your brake cleaner and you spray it all in there. Make sure you get it all over your camera and your face. And at the same time, you just want to move it. Don't be shy with this brake cleaner, especially on the B because see, it already moves better. Okay, so 
brake cleaner and okay so now what you want to do is after you work work it a couple times back and forth so you need to just turn it counterclockwise i think it's about 14 full turns and it comes to a stop don't force it once it stops don't force it because you'll break the forks or the the inside so once it stops you spray some wd-40 in there and just keep working it a couple of times back and forth I don't know if you can tell in the video, but this thing is moving so much faster now and it doesn't get stuck anymore. So this is probably not a permanent fix, obviously. Um, if you just do this a couple times here and there, I think you'd be okay. But that's what happens is a bunch of clutch dust gets in there after a, a while and it just uh, stuffs stuff things up like um, the forks. That's why you know, they have to move back and forth freely the actuator only moves it one way and then it releases it and it's supposed to be like a spring loaded thing where it just goes back in place and obviously when it gets stuck um your clutch is slipping and everything so so i can tell this is already moving but like i said don't force it once it comes to a stop don't force it because you will break the inside so I'm gonna do this a couple more times on the actuator B and uh, then we'll move on to the A. A is not giving any problems, but I'm gonna do it anyways. But I'm gonna do it anyways, the same procedure because um, why not? It's like a simple thing, doesn't cost anything pretty much. You have the tool. So it's working good now. All right, let's move on to the A. So to get to actuator A, it's actually right here. So the easiest thing to do is uh, remove this air box out of the way. There's a couple connectors like the map sensor. Uh, you just press and pull. Press and pull on that. And uh, release this clamp, and the air box comes out. Just unhook this uh, air hose. So the whole air box comes out like that, and uh, the actuator is actually down here. Let me show you. So this is actuator A. This controls the forward gears. So same thing, four bolts, they're exactly the same. So if you're having problems with the actuator, what you can do is you can switch places, take the A out, put it in the B place, and then put the B up here. Just for troubleshooting purposes, I think it's, uh, it's great. Unless you have some extra laying around, um, that's also good to have, uh, but if you buy these, make sure you buy the OEM ones, even if they're used, try to get OEM, those aftermarket ones. Half of the time they don't work or they um, they don't last long, so yeah. So let me get this out, same thing, we're gonna spray some brake fluid. On this one, I'm not gonna spray too much because um, the way it's facing up, I don't want too much uh, liquid get, getting into the transmission because it could make things worse. So uh, take it easy on this one. Wow, it's pretty dirty in there. So um, what I think happens is there's no seal or anything on here. There's nothing to seal. 
water getting in so over time i think moisture and water just gets in there and it starts uh, messing things up as well um, not just the clutch dust the, obviously the best thing to do is remove the whole transmission take the clutch out clean the forks properly but this actually works as well so if you're trying to save some time and uh and you don't have time to remove the transmission this will get you by for a little bit but obviously you gotta remove the transmission and do it the right way um some people like to replace parts but i think just cleaning them up is fine unless they're completely broken a little bit of WD-40 any type of lubricant I think would work it's just what I have right now at the moment in my hands so you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise 14 times you can do this by hand I'm using a tool just to speed things up and you just uh, release and then Spray. So once you spray the brake cleaner and lubricant into um, actuator A and B um, or into the forks. Um, now keep in mind that this will only work if your forks didn't fail completely. They're just getting stuck because of uh, buildup of dirt and dust, clutch dust and all that. So this will only work. Uh, I guess this is a good way to troubleshoot if you need new forks or not. Um, so once you do all that, reassemble everything. and. Um, you need to use a scan tool at this point um, my scan tool is just a it's an older launch tool uh, i'm sure other scan tools have the same thing i already checked the uh, transmission codes i have no codes so i'm gonna back up a few steps here and i'm going to special functions tcm adaptation learning okay yes okay so now um, you want to do all these procedures, which I already did the transmission range sensor, which reads what gear you're in. So, like if you're in park, it's going to read park on the dash. If you're in reverse, it's going to read reverse on the dash. I already did that. So, next step will be the shift drum. So, with ignition on, you just go to a shift drum. Yes, ignition on. And it's just going to go through a cycle. Um, nice. Um, it's just going to go through the cycle make sure that everything moves properly um so this takes you know 20 to 30 seconds this first step um, i'm not going to record all of it or you could just you know fast forward if you need to but so it's doing the shift drum right now and uh, you're going to hear the transmission make noises and uh, go through the cycle so you gotta make sure you hold your brake pedal down Click OK, and uh, this takes 60 seconds, so I'm going to fast forward through this and get back. So you can hear the transmission doing its thing, and it says test complete. That's a good sign. So now you switch ignition off, 
you click OK and it basically it's just gonna power the all the modules down so this also takes about 45 seconds to a minute and a half so I'm gonna restart this okay so that's over and we turn ignition back on we're gonna go to the clutch option ignition on okay so this takes about 30 seconds what this does is it's gonna shift and engage the clutch A and B some actuators A and B it's gonna engage one at a time and it's gonna adjust the clutch um, you, you don't really have to do this technically it says that it'll learn on its own after a good drive but this I believe just speeds up the process of uh, relearning the, the clutch um, even though you know even though it's not a new clutch but it just it helps relearn everything so this takes some time now this procedure actually I believe uh, the car needs to be warmed up to full temperature which I've had it idling a while ago so it's a, a full operating temperature and uh, now it's saying it's gonna reset adaptive values and all that so this takes some time as well uh, you just gotta be patient and um, once this goes through we're gonna actually start the car and uh, push the pedal the gas pedal to the floor and it's gonna engage the clutch A and B and um, that's how it does the adjustments I guess so I can hear everything is moving now which before actuator B we didn't have reverse basically um, so now it says to start the car So now we started the car, click OK, and now it says to push the pedal to the floor. OK, and OK, so it engaged A and B. Now it says return to idle. Once it's back to idle, we click OK, and now so there's a bunch of other stuff. You got to make sure that all the accessories are off, like AC, I guess, radio, all that. Headlights, probably. And, um, and I was just going to go through the full shift cycle and uh, then power down the modules again. And it'll be ready for a test drive. So, like I said before, this may not help if your forks completely failed. But, um, like, your forks could actually fail, like the they don't move at all uh, that could be a problem and you need to replace them or they could be really really built up with uh, like clutch dust and it's possible that maybe you just can remove the transmission clean them up really nice and then re-loop them and put them back in um, in my case on this one I guess it wasn't too bad I got a hundred thousand miles on this car and it wasn't bad enough to where this helped now is this gonna last forever no it will not nothing will last forever I guess so um, this is a good way to trouble troubleshoot if your TCM is bad or maybe your your um, actuators are bad um, this procedure won't hurt just make sure you don't spray too much brake cleaner in there um, and uh, don't spray too much lube in there uh, just you know just kind of decide on your own so once this is done right now it's a learning uh, touch point shaft B uh, which is reverse I believe so once this is done um, I'm gonna go on a test drive um, you gotta do some normal driving and see it tells me right now clutch A learned touch point is 12.16 millimeters clutch B learn point is 13.66 um, I'm not sure what the specs are as far as millimeters but uh, the fact that it says clutch touch points uh, learn succeeded that means that everything is working properly and now my reverse is back and my you know it's gonna shift good so let's take it on the test drive and then we'll check codes one one last time and this one's ready to go all right so now this vehicle drives no problem there's no codes and i'm driving it normal right now uh, just so it goes through the shift cycle and adjusts to how you're driving the car so uh, after about five to ten minutes of driving 
normally you can actually uh, push it and see if it'll shift on you know shift when you're drag racing but that's just it i hope i hope this video helps someone out i know these transmissions are have a bad name but it's not actually the transmissions it's the transmission components like the tcm the actuators and then the forks of course get stuck or need to be replaced um, um, I've, you know I've worked on at least 20 of these focuses in the last six months and I've never had one that had a bad clutch most of the time it's the TCM or it's the forks that are sticking and out of those 20 I think only one of them maybe two that actually had a uh, bad fork like one of the forks was completely stuck to where it wouldn't move either way even when I cleaned it it was still seized so most of the time you can get away with just cleaning it and uh, like I, as you can see it worked for me on this one but you know it may not work on every single one so try this out this doesn't cost anything and this takes you know 10-20 minutes of your time and you will know if your transmission needs to be replaced or rebuilt or you know you need parts so stay tuned like and subscribe until next time later